we've talked in the past on macroeconomics about various aggregate supply curves. Just a quick review, right? We talked about an aggregate supply curve that was vertical in the long run at the level of full employment output. Never mind, it's not a straight line. I wasn't that great in kindergarten with crayons anyway, okay? But we talked about a vertical aggregate supply curve, which said no matter what happened to aggregate demand, you always return to an equilibrium at full employment. We called that kind of aggregate supply curve. We said that was the classical economics view of aggregate supply. Then we talked about the experience in the United States economy, the Great Depression, and Mr. Keynes, and how he argued that that wasn't true, and so we demonstrated Mr. Keynes' arguments with what we call the sharp break aggregate supply curve, where you were either down here in a recession, or you were up here in an inflation, and you were always trying to get right there in the little sharp break, the sweet spot, right? Okay. That was the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. Once we got through talking about that, you may recall we did the algebraic model with it. Then we talked about an aggregate supply curve that was, let's change the colors here, that was partially Keynesian and at full employment was classical, but that over some range as you increase your economic activity closer to full employment, that the aggregate supply curve began to take on some slope, okay? And we call these the Keynesian range for the flat range. And if you had an equilibrium down here, you were in trouble. You had a, a recession or a depression. We talked about the vertical range as the classical range. And if you were up there somewhere, your problem was not unemployment and recession. Your problem was inflation, right? And then in this intermediate range here, what we saw was that when aggregate demand changed in that range, let's say from 81 to 82, what happened? You got some improvement in your unemployment picture, you put more people back to work, but you also saw uh, a worse situation in terms of higher inflation. And if you move from AD2 to AD1, you made the inflation picture better, but you made the unemployment picture worse. And so this range in here involved some trade-offs. Now, next graph, we're going to modify this supply curve again just because it's easy to explain some things this way. And we're going to say it this way. Here's your long-run aggregate supply curve. Long-run aggregate supply at full employment. Classical, okay? But in the short run, you also will have this sort of curve, a short-run aggregate supply curve. So we've got two supply curves up here. And then we start asking, well, where's the aggregate demand curve and what does that mean for the economy? Okay? So let's try one. Aggregate demand curve falls right here. Okay? Here's your equilibrium. Aggregate demand. Here's your level of output. And here's your level of inflation. Okay? At this point, it's a short-run equilibrium, but it's got pressure on it to change, to move towards the long-run equilibrium. Where's the long-run equilibrium? Aggregate demand and long-run aggregate supply. So we say that absent any fiscal, monetary policies, etc., caterus paribus, if you will, in the long run, the economy has pressures on it to move in this direction. And that, if you recall, that's pretty much the classical argument that with some unemployment, you have an excess of labor, wages will fall. Remember that? Wages fall, what happens next? Prices fall, and as prices fall, people start buying more stuff. And so you will move in the long run towards this equilibrium over here, just as we described it in the, in the pure classical system, okay? The question becomes, of course, if this is where we are, how long does it take to get there? Because until we get from here to here, we still have a, an unemployment problem. We have some folks out of jobs, and, and maybe this means a high unemployment problem. How long can you wait 
for the economy to fix itself. Remember, that was one of the criticisms of the whole classical argument. But now we can show it with both a short run and a long run aggregate supply curve and say, here's where we are, and here's the way forces are trying to push us. Okay? Try to another one up here. Let's put an aggregate demand curve out here. What if the aggregate demand curve is over here at 82? That was 81. What's going on? Here's your short run equilibrium, and where's your long run equilibrium? Aggregate demand and long run aggregate supply right here. You're going to go, let's say, from point C to point D, or at least you're going to have forces pushing you that direction. Why? What's going on there? At point C, what's going on? You are beyond full employment. You brought your unemployment rate down maybe to 3%. It's pretty easy to get a job out there, right? I mean, if you can't get a job out in this economy, right, what should you do? Go home to mama. Because if you can't get a job in this economy, you've got a real problem. All right? But for businesses, this means it's tough to find workers. It's really tough to find more workers. Even though people are spending a lot of money, business is great. How do we find more, more workers? Well, easy. We start paying them higher wages, and maybe we steal them from our competitors. But, remember this? This is a shortage of labor. This was a surplus. Here we have a shortage of labor. We can't find enough good people. And as a result, wages go up. When we had a surplus, wages fell. Now we have a, a shortage. Wages get bid up, and as, P, as businesses have to pay higher wages, how do they cover that? They raise prices. And as they raise prices, sales begin to decrease. And so they go up in this direction, just the opposite of the adjustment down here. We go from C to D. And so we say, if we have a short-run equilibrium out here, we see some of the pressures that are on the economy to try to move us to point D. All right? In some of our discussions in class, we'll use this, this particular graph and these short and long-run supply curves to talk about what's going on and maybe to explain some of the things that happened in the past.